Would you like to be somebody who understands why thinking for yourself is so important and what can happen if you don't think for yourself and you simply absorb the knowledge of other people and the experiences, the, the truths of other people? Then listen to this entire video where I use a metaphor to explain how just absorbing knowledge from others lets you create a sort of instable um, house of knowledge and wisdom which is not very beneficial to you. So before we get into this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development, dating and how to reduce suffering in life. Let's get into it. So the problem is that nowadays, for a lot of people, we spend a lot of time learning about what others have concluded uh, who have lived before us or who have concluded these things before us and they've written books, they've made movies, they've made podcasts, whatever, and we absorb a lot of this knowledge from other people. Instead of concluding these things ourselves, for example, uh, this happens a lot in regards to self-help gurus who write books on how to, let's say, optimize your life and live a more effective life. And so we absorb this, these, these, let's say, this advice on how to conduct ourselves in the world instead of actually concluding these lessons ourselves. And this, is, this topic is less relevant for sort of objective sciences like biology, uh, which I will get to later. And uh, one pope, I don't know which pope it was, but once said, uh, had a quote uh, in regards to humans in that um, some people are forever reading and never to be read. So they are always learning from others, but never actually express what they have learned themselves. And um, Schopenhauer, the philosopher, also had a quote who sa uh, which said, um, the thoughts of another that we read are crumbs from another's table. He's basically saying that the, um, the wisdom spread or expressed or um, spoken from others is actually not our wisdom. It is simply the crumb from another person's table, the leftovers from another person. So it is not of the same value as wisdom obtained ourselves. And I will use a metaphor now to explain this. So as you grow in life and in age, you learn more and more, obviously. So your knowledge expands. You can compare it to building a house. When you obtain more knowledge about life, you lay more bricks on top of each other until you have a tall, robust, fully fledged house. I mean, you never stop learning in life, so practically the house will never be built fully, uh, it will never be finished, but for simplicity, we will use this example. So you always want to build the house as fast as possible because there are, or let's say your mindset is, you were drawn into building it ASAP because there are many benefits of having a strong finished house. You know, the house offers you protection from the harshness of reality. The structure of knowledge or the house gives you a foundation with which you can relatively accurately interpret the world. Um, the house consists of your own truths that you have experienced that you know subjectively to be true for yourself. However, Wait, so as we go in life, we build more and more bricks and we go up and up and our house becomes more sophisticated, let's say, and you understand life more. Because you know, when you're young, there are a lot of things you don't understand and that's quite anxiety provoking because you essentially live in some sort of chaos, which is, I think, um, the root of a lot of people's anxiety or existential anxiety is because they just simply don't understand the world and the, li the world is, the universe is extremely complex. Now. When you learn some knowledge that stems from the experiences of someone else, at first it seems like you are able to build or use their bricks for your house and suddenly you're like building way faster and your house is growing and growing at a higher rate. And for example, let's say you read a book on spirituality, like a self-help book. The advice given in the book is the conclusion made by someone else. It is, it is the author's truth, but not yours. Now, at first it seems like suddenly you have made a head start by learning uh, this knowledge on spirituality, but really the brick does not fit the wall, uh, your own wall, the wall of your house, or uh, it does not fit the other bricks in the wall of your house. Uh, it is a different kind of brick. It's made of a different material. And when you put it in the wall, it doesn't really stabilize the wall. It's somewhat out of place. At first, like it, it kind of works, but objectively, actually, it's not very stable. 
The knowledge from someone else is not in tune with the existing foundation of knowledge in your house. I think your knowledge becomes somewhat fragmented then and that because if you use the knowledge on spirituality to continue learning, let's say, the, the, the knowledge you gain from that self-help book, you use that to continue uh, learning about spirituality, then you gain new knowledge that will be instable and you won't fully understand it in the way that you understand the knowledge based on your own experiences. It's over like it's, it's not a truth for you. It's knowledge, but it's not wisdom. It's your knowledge, but it's, no, it's the knowledge from someone else, uh, but it's not your own wisdom, it's different. And Schopenhauer said, um, it is a hundred times more valuable for you to figure out something yourself than learning from it, uh, by uh, learning it uh, from someone else, because only then will the thought be integrated as a foundational part of your thought system, because only then will your thought be consistent with all the other conclusions that you made. So we need to think like, as we grow older in life, we have like this, it's a house essentially that with which you can, you live in and you know, you live, it's like the, the headquarters of your life. And it is coherent, it's co consistent and stable because it is all, everything that you have learned is somehow connected with one another. It's all one thing. And when you uh, d derive some knowledge from something else, from external, it's like, it's somehow not, it doesn't fit perfectly, let's say. And Goethe also had a quote, he said something along the lines of, um, what you have inherited from your forefathers, you must first win for yourself if you are to possess it. That's, that, that's essentially sums it up that in order to, in order to have, in order, in order to be entitled to use the truth of someone else, you first have to have made that truth, figured out that, experienced the truth yourself, let's say. Now, the criticism of this perspective is, of course, um, well, that you should, if you never read a book or never listen to a podcast or so, you'll be quite behind in life. And I agree that you can learn and progress a lot in life if you, are, if you learn from what others have concluded, you know, and it gives us a huge head start. Like imagine how, having to try to uh, produce medication from scratch as a scientist without the knowledge of the chemists who have lived before you. And uh, and conducted many experiments before you. But what this argument on thinking for yourself is mainly referring to is uh, philosophical and about a phenomenal, phenomenological experiences. So what, things you experience, you know, and aren't objective, let's say, and less about sciences like bi biology, which are more objective because phenomenolo phenomenology, phenomenology is subjective, you know, and uh, learnings people have earned uh, through experiencing life, that's what we're, what I'm referring to here. And the key difference about on regarding this topic is uh, whether you accept what someone someone else has says and has concluded, and just internalizing it without really questioning and criticizing it, or whether you learn something about what someone else says and then and then um, actually uh, deconstructing and exhaustively criticizing, evaluating it, evaluating it. Because then you you compare the 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 knowledge that you've read about, let's say, with what you know, and you 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 um, you judge it, you judge it, and you you evaluate whether it is, let's say, in your eyes, true or not, and that's really important because then you you think about what you have learned, and that that is essentially how you build your own your own wisdom is through thinking and evaluating what you have learned because the thing is if you just learn something from a book and you don't think about it then you haven't then it's not yours it is just someone else so you you gain possession by thinking about it let's put it like that so in conclusion uh nowadays we are faced or we have access to a lot of or let's say wisdom from other people on how to live our lives how to conduct ourselves you know from self-help gurus let's say and if we just absorb this knowledge and internalize it without criticizing it, it is not our wisdom because we haven't experienced, we haven't concluded these things ourselves and they become fragmented parts of our um, structure of knowledge because they are not fully consistent with everything else that we know. They're somehow, they're somehow like external and th it's like putting, you build a brick with red, like a house with red bricks and suddenly you use a sandstone brick. It just doesn't fit and it destabilizes the wall, let's say. It, or let's say, let's put it like this. If you continued building with a red brick, your house would be more, would be more stable. And this is very important 
it's 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 key to question what you're learning think about it because you know if you never read a book if you never listen to a podcast you know you might be a little bit behind in life and you can learn a lot of things about the nature of reality through podcasts reading books youtube videos that's very super key but you need it's really important to question it and i have fallen victim to the uh, to this to this trap myself severely listening to people like jordan peterson and just internalizing what he says instead of actually evaluating it and questioning myself whether what he says is true or not so i hope you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development dating and how to reduce suffering in life thank you for listening